Welcome to Electron Online, and here's another example of how we can use Gauss's law to find the electric field near this particular object. This object here is an infinite sheet filled with charge, but since the sheet is infinite, uh, presumably made out of conductor material, we will find charge on both sides of this sheet. Normally when the, when the conductor material is curved into a solid shape, so then typically the charges will reside on the very outside and not on the inside. But in this case, since it's flat, the geometry is perfectly symmetric, you will have charge on both sides. So half the charge will be on one side, half the charge will be on the other side. And let's assume that on each side, the charge density, and of course this is the surface area density, would be 2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs per square meter, or 2 microcoulombs per square meter of charge. All right, so we're going to use the... Um, what we call the Gauss's law to find the electric field uh, emanating from both sides of the sheet. And of course the equation is that the surface integral of the electric field strength uh, times the area equals the Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. Epsilon sub naught of course being the constant of 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb square per newton meter square. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and and utilize the, the fact that the electric field will emanate directly perpendicular to the surface, which means that the direction of the electric field will be parallel to the direction of the normal to the surface, which means there's no angle between them. We can then simply say that this will be equal to E times the area that we consider equals Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. The area that we're concerned with will be the surface area of the ends of the cylindrical Gaussian surface. We think of the cylinder here as a Gaussian surface. Electric field will only emanate through the ends on both sides, so we don't have to worry about the sides of the cylinder. So the area right here will simply be equal to pi r squared. Okay, so the Q inside can then be calculated by finding the density, the surface density, and multiply times the area. So let's go ahead and do that. And the electric field strength, E, will be equal to now, since we have electric field emanating on both ends, we have to take both ends of the cylinder into account. So that would be, uh, whoop, I don't want an equal sign there. I want a multiplication sign. So it'll be the electric field strength times 2 times pi r squared. So 2 times the area of each end of the Gaussian surface, and that will be equal to the Q inside. The Q inside will equal the charge density times the area. Remember, the charge density is charge per unit area. If we then multiply times the area, the area units fall away, and you're just left with the charge, and we divide that by epsilon sub naught. Now remember that the area here was also going to be pi r squared, so we have E equals, whoop, I'm getting ahead of myself, will be E times 2 pi r squared equals sigma times pi r squared, because now we're only talking about the charge density on each end or each side of the cylinder or each side of the surface divided by epsilon sub naught. So the pi counts out the pi, the r squared counts out the r squared, and we're left with 2 times E equals this, or E equals sigma the charge density per unit area, divided by 2 times epsilon sub naught. And that would be the electric field strength outside an infinite sheet. Now, why doesn't it go and diminish as you go further out? Why is there no dependency on the distance away from the sheet? Well, if it's an infinite sheet, then the relative effect of the charge on the sheet will remain the same no matter how far you go away from the sheet because the sheet will as you go farther away from the sheet, you have more and more influence of charges that are farther away at a smaller angle. And therefore, the result is that the electric field strength will not diminish. Now, of course, that's only up to a limit. If you go 10 feet away or 20 feet away or 30 feet away from the sheet, if the sheet, the sheet is only infinite within reasonable distance from it, it becomes not infinite when you get too far away from it. And then we need to look at this in a very different way. All right, so that will work for this. And this will be equal to sigma. Sigma, of course, we got 2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs per square meter. Multiply that times. Nope, we don't have to multiply that times anything. We're going to divide it by 2 times sigma, which is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulombs squared per newton meter squared. And with a calculator, we can figure out what that is equal to. So 2e to the 6 minus 
divided by 2, divided by 8.85 e to the 12th minus, and we end up with, hmm, so that would be equal to 1.13 times 10 to the 5th, and that would be newtons per coulomb, which are the unit for the electric field. Now, those, that's the magnitude of the field. The direction simply would be perpendicular uh, away from the surface. And that's how we do that for an infinite plane sheet of charge.